Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show how to use a custom function I wrote to basically turn a data file into a flat file or a two-dimensional two file into a flat file. So you can see here I've got a small set, sample size of data that's got multiple columns of data. Uh, in the column access we've got both uh, currency and time as a uh, member and in the row access we've got company and functional area. Uh, what we're going for is something like this. You can see here it's a flattened file with a column for each of basically the dimensions with one column for the amount. This is good for creating a load file or a flat file. Um, you can use Power Query and a couple other macros to do this, but with Excel Spill Range, uh, I like the idea of having a custom function. Uh, you do have to have Excel Spill Range uh, as part of your version of Excel. Uh, most people do these days. It came out in 2019, but if you don't talk to your IT department, a uh, quick test to be would be if you can hit equals and then type in the unique function. If you see unique appear, you're good to go. Uh, if you don't have the unique function, well, you don't have spill range, and this will not work. So, uh, what how to get this uh, code? I put a link in the description, but you're going to want to go to. Uh, I stored it on GitHub, which is a great place to store code. Uh, you can see here in the name, it's got to be github.com slash pgsystemtester. And what we're looking for is a function. Uh, don't get tricked by some, I don't know, internet person to make you load a uh, subroutine that you don't understand. But from github.com slash pgsystemtester, you should be good. Uh, so copy that code, go back to Excel, and you're going to need to go to the Visual Basic Editor. Uh, if you have the Developer tab, you could click on Visual Basic, but you may not. At that point, you could just hit Alt F11, or you can right click on your worksheet name. Now oh, you can't see it. Hold on. Ah, there you go. Well, you can right click on your worksheet name and hit view code. From here, uh, you can click on uh, the. What well, may not look exactly like this, but if you click on insert module, you should see a module appear if you don't already have one, and it's module one. From there, we're just going to paste in the code that we grabbed from GitHub. Again, it should see something like this. Uh, no uh, directory or uh, file uh, should be within the code. You can close the editor here. And at that point, we're ready to use the function within the worksheet. So I'll just I'll zoom out and put the function over here. So I'll hit equals unpivot data. That's the name I gave it. I hit tab. And you can use this FX insert function tool to get a little help. So you'll see here I've named the parameters something hopefully useful. So the data range, you can just select this area here. The column range is going to be up here. And you actually don't have to make it exact. So see for row range, I'll go, uh, I'll just grab the entire column. And as long as that row range intersects uh, with the data range, so here it's seven to 20, uh, you'll be fine. Uh, the last two parameters are optional. Uh, if you wanna use them, you can type the word true in there, but chances are just leaving them blank or false will give you the data set that you're looking for. Going to hit OK and zoom out here, and you'll see now I have a flat file or a flat data set that spilled uh, into uh, into my Excel version, so I could you know, see each uh, member here. And it'll update as I make changes. So if I change the 344 to being 999, you'll see that number over here uh, changed. Uh, again, you can use uh, Power Query or some other tools to do this, but uh, hope I like this quick and easy way. Uh, you could, in theory, also just, you know, flatten this doing a copy-paste a bunch of times going down the rows, but that's pretty tedious. So, hope you find this useful.